Uh, hello, fellow mystery fans. Well, our look at season two of Veronica Mars now continues on with Green Eyed Monster. So let's take a look at it. Veronica calls the hospital to see whether or not Meg Manning has been removed from the ICU. Afterwards, a woman, Julie, comes in and says that she needs Keith to investigate whether or not her boyfriend, Colin, is cheating. As she is leaving, Keith comes in and tells Veronica that he can't take on another case due to a sheriff run. At his request, Veronica pretends to call Julie and cancel the case, although she decides to take it on herself, hoping to get a few thousand dollars. Veronica contacts Julie, who says that she's been noticing signs of cheating. Jackie invites Wallace to help her with trigonometry. The police officer from the previous episode, Nathan Woods, pulls up to Alicia's house. Alicia tells Keith about her problem with Nathan, and he agrees to help. Wallace and Jackie are being very flirtatious in school. Nathan tries to break into Alicia's house until Keith shows up. Keith thinks that he is a criminal named Carl Morgan, although he's not. Veronica attempts to visit Meg in the hospital and finds Duncan waiting there. Meg swears angrily to tell both of them to leave. Rude. Colin goes into a woman's house, and Veronica takes pictures and sends them to Julie. After investigating further, Veronica finds out that Colin is actually just seeing a rabbi and tackles Julie before she can barge into the house. Ugh. Julie requests more surveillance on Colin for an extra thousand dollars. Keith comes into Sheriff Lamb's, off, like Sheriff Lamb's office and tells him about Car and tells him about Carl, Carl Morgan. Veronica notices that an earring that she saw previously in an evidence bag surrounding the death of, the death of David Curly Moran belonged to Weevil. Weevil got an anonymous call saying that Curly was behind the bus crash. Hmm. Wallace goes to help Veronica, leaving Jackie by herself leading Jackie to feel jealous. Veronica, disguised as a sorority girl, investigates Colin by going to his house, pretending to have a flat tire, and attempting to seduce him while Wallace films. Veronica tells Wallace about the guy she saw with Jackie the other night. Veronica, pretending to need a computer, goes into Colin's house. Veronica tries to, to seduce him once again, and he denies her advances. On the computer, Veronica copies all of Colin's files onto a hard drive. Collins tells her that it is not his house. He is house sitting for Nicholas Cage. Well, alrighty then. Veronica sends Wallace to distract Colin while, he, while the files download. Veronica and Duncan share a romantic dinner, but it is room where Veronica brings up Meg. Later, Veronica looks at Colin's files and finds out that he has been researching Julie's wealthy family. Ah. That night, Meg's sister, Lizzie, shows up at Duncan's door. Lizzie tells Duncan to remove any private information from Meg's computer before her parents see it. Hmm. Lizzie finds Veronica, and Veronica decides to call Mac for help. Mac successfully stores all Meg's information onto a hard drive. Julie calls Veronica and tells her, and she tells her that he was being completely faithful. Veronica almost looks at Meg's files before thinking better of it. Sheriff Lamb calls Keith and tells him that Carl Morgan is actually a police officer named Nathan Woods. Veronica tells Julie, Julie that his supposed house and car are not actually his and that he was researching her family. Keith walks in and scolds Veronica for taking on the case. Julie informs Veronica that she broke up with Colin. Veronica sends Julie a package, saying that it was a mistake for them to break up with each other. Keith apologizes to Veronica. Veronica investigates Weevil's story and eventually connects it to Logan. Logan denies the accusations, but he says that he threw a party on the night of the bus. Says that he threw a party on the night of the bus crash and that Weevil crashed it. Keith digs further into Alicia's backstory, and Nathan tells Wallace that he is Wallace's father. Bum bum bum. So anyway, let's look at, look at some cultural references here. Veronica references the song "Mr. Brightside." Jackie mentions Dungeons and Dragons. In the hospital, a call can be heard for Dr. Godard. Veronica says, ruh row the famous catchphrase by Scooby-Doo. Weevil references Martha Stewart's role in the m clone stock trading case. Excuse me. Jackie calls Veronica Miss Pixie Sticks. Wallace mentions Lolita. Colin is house sitting for Nicolas Cage. Veronica makes a joke about Iggy Pop's drug, addic drug addiction. Aunt Lisa Marie Presley. Lisa Marie Presley is on Nicolas Cage's bar. Hmm. And now on to the arc significance of this episode. 
Veronica questions Weevil about an earring the sheriff's department found that was his. Weevil got an anonymous call that stated Curly Moran was responsible for the bus crash. Veronica traces the call to the Eccles house, but it was during Logan's life, sh life short party, which both the PCHers and the sheriff's department crashed, so it could have been anyone. Lucy brings Meg Lucy brings Meg's laptop to Duncan and asks him and asks him to remove all of Meg's personal files. Veronica gets Mac to help. Keith finds out, Keith finds out the man that he and Alicia Finnell saw in Chicago is Carl Morgan, an undercover alias for Nathan Woods, a Chicago cop and Alicia's ex-husband. He is also Wallace's father. Now on to the music. The following three songs can be heard in the episode. Jealousy by Stereophonics, Jealous Love by Robert Cray, and So Jealous by Tegan and Sarah. And now, finally, on to the production of this episode. Great Ant Monster was written by Diana Lynn North and directed by Jason Bloom. This is Bloom's first of four directing credits for Veronica Mars, as well as North's fourth writing credit. The episode features the return of recurring character Cindy Mac McKenzie, who had not appeared since Mad. Among other guest stars in the, in the episode are Laura Bell Bundy and Crest Williams, who we all know from Black Lightning, am I right? Who later come to star together in the television series Heart of Dixie. The episode's title refers to the phrase Green-Eyed Monster, a synonym for jealousy. So overall, this episode is actually pretty interesting, and while it doesn't move the plot along that much forward, it still does a good job advancing some plot lines, if you know what I mean. So overall, I give Green Eye Monster 4 marshmallows out of 5. Anyway, tune in tomorrow as we take a look at a blast from the past. So until then, remember everyone, the game's afoot.